This is our first lesson in a unit on Newton's laws. Previously in physics we studied kinematics which was the describing of how things move. How far, how fast, whether they're accelerating or not, and so on. In this unit we're going to focus on dynamics which is the study of why things move and essentially things move due to forces that act on those objects. Our thinking about dynamics began with Aristotle. Aristotle didn't experiment but he claimed among other things that heavier things fall faster. Bricks for example fall faster than feathers. However this claim doesn't quite hold water. If we were to take two bricks for example and tie them together with a rope then the two bricks together don't fall any faster than one brick separately. So while the heavier things fall faster claim seems to make sense it doesn't apply to all cases and in physics if we have a theory that doesn't adequately explain certain phenomena then we have to modify the theory. Aristotle didn't do that. Among other things he also claimed that forces arise from matter seeking to return to its natural place. For example smoke according to Aristotle would drift upward because smoke is mostly air and air is upward and the smoke wants to return to its natural place. Um, waters originated in the sea so a river will flow to the sea because the water will want to return to its natural place. Uh, boulders rolling down a mountain. The boulders are made of earth and the earth is down at the bottom of the mountain so that's why boulders roll down a mountain. A little bit of primitive thinking from our point of view today but at least it was a start. Galileo then did quite a bit in uh, the 16th and 17th centuries to push forward our ideas about dynamics. And I'd like to talk about one of the experiments that he did. Um, he rolled spheres down inclined planes and what he found was that the sphere tended to uh, continue rolling until it reached the height that it started at and then it would stop and, and roll back. So even if he changed the angle of the incline the sphere would do that. It would keep rolling until it reached it th the height it had started at and then it would come back down. So Galileo thought well suppose this surface just continues on and on and on forever horizontally. According to this line of thinking when would the sphere stop rolling? And the answer is it wouldn't in theory. Galileo saw that as long as its environment remained constant the sphere would continue rolling and rolling. In essence Galileo came sneakingly close to formulating what we now call Newton's law of inertia. Newton's first law of motion is also called his law of inertia. And it says this, an object at rest tends to stay at rest and an object in motion tends to stay in motion at constant velocity unless the object is acted upon by an unbalanced external force. Inertia is proportional to mass. The law of inertia is universal. It applies to all objects, moving and non-moving, massive or not. Inertia is proportional to mass. The more mass something has, the more inertia it has. And inertia is the resistance to changing its state of motion. So if you compare a bowling ball with a ping pong ball, it's much easier to get a ping pong ball moving because it has very little mass and very little inertia but on the other hand it's very easy to stop it moving also. A bowling ball is much more difficult to 
start moving, it's much more difficult to stop it moving. Same thing with a large vehicle compared to a small vehicle. Much easier to get the small vehicle up to speed, much easier to stop it because it has less mass and less inertia. An airplane, a large airplane, has a lot of inertia. It tends to have a rather smooth ride compared especially to a small airplane much less mass, much less inertia, much easier to change its state of motion, the ride will be quite a bit more turbulent and bumpy on a small aircraft. Here we have at the bottom a picture of the Titanic and there is a jet ski. Much more difficult to get the Titanic moving, to get it up to speed, but as you all know from the story, much more difficult to make it stop or change direction because it has so much mass, so much inertia. Final thoughts on introduction to dynamics. 1. Kinematics deals with motions watts, displacement, velocity, acceleration, time. Dynamics deals with the why of motion, forces. Of course, forces influence the watts of kinematics. Two. Aristotle said that forces in nature were the result of things seeking their natural place. 3. Galileo realized that continually applied forces were not necessary to keep an object in motion. 4. Newton's law of inertia says that objects tend to maintain their state of motion. The more inertia they have due to their mass, the more they want to maintain that state of motion.